Hey you guys, Erin and Dusty here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to the channel. So we are headed home for a long weekend full of family fun, but we didn't want to leave you guys hanging without a video. We'll for sure be sharing a recap of that adventure with you guys, but today we have a very special interview. Yes, so we met with our friend Ryan, virtually met a few weeks back after moving into our new home with solar panels, with all of these high-end features, we started hearing from people saying, oh my gosh, you need to be careful about EMFs and all of these things. So we were referred to a building biologist, something we had never heard of before, and Ryan was our guy. We didn't originally plan on turning this into a video, but the conversation was so great, I started recording and told him we might have to make a YouTube about this. It was packed with so much helpful easy to access information, things that won't cost you an arm and a leg that you right. can implement in your own home to help mitigate EMFs, filter your air, filter your water, right. things like that to just make it a healthier home environment for you and your little ones. So I just actually posted on Instagram this morning about Eat Move Rest Homes. So yes, these homes are real. If you guys haven't heard or haven't seen it, definitely go check out Eat Move Rest Homes dot com we are working with the builder to bring you guys healthy modern homes like the one we're living in and this is what it's all about how to mitigate emfs how to have clean air clean water and yes optimize our living space not just the foods we eat but the spaces we live in this information is not readily accessible to most of us so we tried to cover as much ground as we could yep this is taking a step beyond the plate or beyond the kale. So we have been talking for quite some time about starting a podcast. Yep. So if you guys enjoy these long form conversations, let us know below in the comments. And if you want to see some more interviews, throw out some names of people who might be interesting to hear from. We just moved into a new home. As I mentioned here in Florida, we've got solar panels um, that we were super excited about until we ha had a bunch of people saying, no, you're going to die from the radiation. <laughs> you know, you need to remove the solar panels immediately. And so we were like, okay, great. Now we better get this figured out. Especially having small children, you know, we just want to make sure like our home is as optimized as possible, especially because we are, I guess, content creators or influencers. And this is kind of like our wheelhouse is health and wellness. So we yeah. want to make sure that, you know, we're doing right by our family and spreading the right information to everybody else too. Yeah. No, I totally get that. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, it is a continual learning process. Even on my downtime, trying to listen to podcasts and learn more and more and more as much as I can and as things change. And let's talk about solar panels because that is always a big question mark for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to solar panels, there's there's two main concerns that we have. One of them is the inverter box that converts the solar pal the panel energy, which is DC, yeah. 12 volt or 24 volt DC, goes into this controller box and it converts it up to the 120 AC that runs our house. Right. Inside that box, we have a really big transformer. We have big capacitors. We have coils that are energizing, they're charging, they're creating this magnetic flux. Now, if that box happens to be on the other side of a wall of where your baby sleeps or where you guys sleep or where you spend a lot of time or in an office, uh, you're going to get affected by this magnetic field. Now, the reason that this magnetic field is dangerous, it's pulsing positive, negative 60 times a second. Yeah. So we have iron in our blood, which is a ferrous material. So it reacts with magnetic fields. So we have this alternating magnetic field. Now we get into this field and we have this iron in our blood. And a lot of people have heavy metals as well in their body. They can literally vibrate, or they will literally vibrate, cause wow. low level insulation. Wow. So that's kind of the mechanism of why the magnetic energy uh, is coming off of these things and power lines and motors and fans, anything that has any kind of movement to it or a lot of, of uh, current flowing through it is going to create this pulsing magnetic field. Now, uh -huh. from the solar panels, as the, the wires that go down to this box, it's all DC, it's static. It's not changing direction, which is completely fine. It's completely healthy for us. But as soon as it hits that box, that field. So you, know, you want to stay eight, 10 feet away from that box if you can. Yeah. Okay. Without measuring it. Sometimes it can be as low as six, but just as a good rule of thumb, keep that eight distance, 10 foot distance around that box. Sure. So that's the first danger of the solar panel system. 
Is yeah. that in our garage? That's on a, the opposite side of a concrete wall on the opposite side of the house and attached to the garage. So we're we're at least probably 20 feet away. And not to good. mention we're inside of concrete walls, right? Yeah. And so I'm not sure. I've heard some people say uh, steel roofing can help protect, uh, you know, concrete walls, stuff like that. Um, the nice thing about Florida is that we've got metal roofs and concrete walls. So hopefully that helps. I'm not sure what you think about that. Well, when it comes to magnetic energy, not, there's not very many materials that will block magnetic energy. I think okay. the magnetic field of our earth goes through water, our bodies, it goes through any material, it goes through our whole earth space. Okay. Um, now, when you get alternating magnetic energy, there is a couple uh, materials, move metal or G iron flex, which is kind of expensive that you can attenuate that a little bit. But yeah. for the most part, magnetic energy is very, very difficult to block. Okay. Radio frequency energy, on the other hand, which is coming from cell towers and our cell phone, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, that can be reflected off of uh, conductive material. So a tin sure. roof, a metal roof, uh, concrete is. Like a semiconductor, it's not all the way conductive, but it is a little bit. It will block a little bit. So more sure. mass will also block. So, so RF, I'm RF. taking notes, by the way. <laughs> Perfect, take notes. So RF is is blocked. So again, if you're talking about 5G, which we hear a lot about, cell tower stuff like that, um, internet, Wi-Fi, that stuff will get blocked by the metal. Magnetic field will not. That's correct. Yeah, okay. and. But the caveat to that, there's a couple specific types of material that will help attenuate, like the move metal, the G-iron flex. You okay. can use some of that to help lower the levels. But radio frequency, I mean, a simple sheet of tin foil will actually reflect quite a bit of the signal back. Nice. So 90, 99, 97% of the signal. Hence the tin foil why, hat. Is that why you sometimes yeah, people that like have tin foil like on their windows or is that something <laughs> What's that all that's about? exactly right yeah 100 percent. that's you're absolutely right that's where the tin foil hat thing comes yeah. from so the second thing to the rate the the solar panels that's dangerous is what's called dirty electricity so you've probably heard this term yeah. what yeah. dirty electricity is is line interference on the line so we have that 60 cycle hertz wave going back and forth on the ac signal positive negative and that energizes the electrons around it and the electric field can extend out sometimes up to eight feet into the room now those wires running through our house can also act like antennas and so if we get any kind of interference with electronics um if let's say the fridge motor kicks on it puts a spike ac unit turns off there's another little dip in there uh, we have some led lighting that maybe is some cheap circuitry and it's causing vibrations on there uh, the solar panel inverter one is a good one that puts off a lot of interference onto the line. So people talk about dirty electricity or line interference. So if you if you're in the commercial space, let's say you're doing building recording studios, uh, you're concerned about line interference getting onto your recording, you've put these filters in place, or you wouldn't install some of these what they call uh, dirty electronics, which put sure. the dirty electric onto there. So if you you, the run-of-the-mill inverters that they use for these solar systems cause a lot of line interference, which travels through the wires, which radiates it out as actual radio frequency interference. And that can get onto our body. It can energize our body. It can interfere with the functionality of our body. So where the magnetic energy is that has a physical interaction with the iron and heavy metals in our blood, causing vibration, low-level inflammation, ultimately cancers and tumors, the radio frequency energy is more interfering with the mind, the brain, the heart, the nervous system, the cellular level that our body communicates back and forth does so with a little electrical impulses. Sure. So when we have these artificial frequencies that are going through the body, it's like if we were trying to have the conversation here and you had a fun, you had a party going on at your place, and I had a party going on at my place, and music right. and people hollering. It'd be really hard to have this conversation on a cellular level. That's what's happening inside of our body when we're getting all these mixed signals, and especially in the brain. Sure. So that's where we see the irritability, the ADHD, the Alzheimer's, the the brain fog, the fatigue. It's because the brain is having a really hard time 
communicating and doing what it does best. And that's controlling the body and controlling the functions. That makes sense. What about that thing he said to get? It was I think the brand was Satic Shield. Satic Shield. He said we need, I'm not sure if you've heard of that or systems like it. He said an electrician comes in, they install it. That basically harmonizes the dirty electricity. Um, possibly. What what's your thoughts on on that? Do you have any information or recommendations? Yeah, so that's a good low level residential kind of basic power filter. Putting a, a filter like that, we've seen 20 to 30%, sometimes reduction in the overall dirty electricity. But this is the thing with dirty electricity. Uh, the bigger problem is the electric field itself. The electric field itself is constantly vibrating, positive, negative. So you know, I'm sitting here next to this wall. Behind me, there's a power uh, outlet. There's also a power outlet over there, and it's connected by a wire. So yeah about three feet away from this power. So, so if I were to pull out a meter right now and measure the body voltage on my body, I probably have several thousand millivolts of, of skin voltage and body voltage being generated. Now, if I were to go walk outside and take my shoes off and stand up in the grass, that would probably go down to some 10, zero if it's a really good ground. Wow. Okay. So that's really the, the bigger issue. That's kind of the elephant in the room. The dirty electricity, is like the dirt on the elephant. Okay. This electric field behind me, if it has spikes and it's irregular and it has little fuzz and it's dirty, what they call dirty, it just makes it more harmful for me. But yeah. for me, I'm not gonna spend thousands of dollars trying to make that a clean sine wave. I would rather just shut the circuit off if I don't need it. And then I can sit okay. here in an electrical environment. Or we can use shielding paint where we can paint the wall and we, that shielding paint, when it's grounded, will block that electrical energy and along with it, the dirty electricity. So when I assess homes and, and I'm looking at making big impacts, we're looking at the electric field, which comes off the electrical wiring, which carries the dirty electricity, but it's not a separate thing. And I'm looking at the magnetic energy because that's affecting the body physically. That's coming from the motors and the fans and the inductors and if there's a big power line out over my house yeah and then the third thing is i'm looking at the radio frequency the exposure that's coming from cell phones and the bluetooth you know, so right now i'm actually in la i'm at a friend's house been out here working this week and so he's not hardwired so i'm using wi-fi right now so i'm getting a little exposure yeah but if i was at the house i have it completely hardwired so i can sit on the computer i can make phone calls from a landline like old school i know that sounds right. outdated but when i'm in the office and i'm making calls and i'm doing stuff like this I'm, i want to be as, as clean and healthy as possible because so when i get done at the end of the day i feel much better back to the dirty electricity part it's more bang for your buck if you can focus on just getting your body out of the field or turning the field off or shielding from that field so that's okay. one place where we do recommend doing some shielding Makes okay. sense. And, and you mentioned the shielding paint, which I've seen and looked up at actually myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the important thing with the shielding paint, though, is you got to be willing to give up electronics or let's just say the wireless electronics in that room. So if I was to shield this room that I'm in right now and then pull out my cell phone and try yeah. to make a phone call, this yeah. cell phone will vary its power depending on how far away I am from the tower. So if the tower is just a quarter mile away it'll send a ping i'll say oh i'm really close i don't really have to use much power i don't have to use much battery now if we're in a shielded room and the cell tower is just a quarter mile away the phone's going to think that we're a long ways away because it's going to send that ping through and as it goes through the shielding it's going to diminish a lot it's going to say oh wow it feels like the cell tower is 20 miles away when actually that's not so it's going to boost its power up to compensate for that oh, so that's wow. going to be a problem second yeah. problem is uh, 97 percent of that signal is going to hit that wall and bounce right back in it's going to mm -hmm. hit the ceiling and back in. it's going to hit that wall and bounce it back in because it radiates out in a, in a sphere and yeah. all that energy is going to hit those walls and what's going to it's going to bounce right back in. then it's probably going to go through me and hit the other wall and bounce back again and then it's going to start acting microwave inside the house so mm -hmm. we focus on bedrooms and just say no technology in the bedrooms because right. the bedroom is a place where we can, we spend a lot of time. It's for healing and resting. We don't need our uh, technology when we're sleeping. Right. So it's a high impact place. 
that we can really turn into a sanctuary. That way, at least eight or nine hours out of the day, you're getting a, a sanctuary away from the EMF, from the electronics. Love that. Love yeah, that. that's huge. We decided to forego the TV on the wall in the bedroom in our new house here. <laughs> right. The nice thing is the bedroom is cleared the farthest away from Wi-Fi, the inverter, the, the, the power box, like literally we're the farthest away and we are don't have the devices so that's a good step yeah i sleep with i've gone through phases where i leave the phone out of the room and other phases where i like put it on airplane mode i have my little (laughs) protective case and it's right next to me like in case of emergency or something it doesn't need to be but yeah and that's the problem with those protective cases it's kind of the same scenario your phone is going to think it's further away from the tower than it is and just boost up the power interesting Yeah. And then I was also going to say, I do notice in our bedroom, like, because I don't know if it's just proximity or because of the concrete walls, but the Wi-Fi really struggles to make it that far. Yeah. And even the cell service is low a lot of times where we're at. I feel like our room is kind of a bunker back there, like already. So we, we may, I would say we, we turn the power, the circuit off maybe to the bedroom at night and then Like you said, maybe call it good and get outside as much as we can. We actually host retreats every March in Costa Rica. And it's at like this like raw vegan retreat center where everyone's just a total hippie and all about all this stuff. Talk about all the medicinal medicinal benefits of all of the plants. And it's talk about grounding. We're not allowed to wear sunglasses. We're not allowed to wear shoes. (laughs) We we were in waterfalls. We're in the ocean. It's it's amazing. We spent a month there with the kids this last year and did two retreats. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's hard to it's come like, back. Like, even the importance of like the direction your head faces when you sleep, like your bed should be facing north or something. Your head should be. What, you want to line up with the, uh, yeah, exactly. We have a north and a south pole on our yeah. body and align that with the earth and it flows better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you can figure out how to live in one of those places long term, I mean, that's really. Yeah, that would be the dream. You know I mean? Yeah, because yeah, a lot of the things you mentioned, you're naturally putting your body in a state that is just going to heal naturally. I know that's the that's- thing that kind of frustrates us is like we feel like, especially here in the U.S., like you have to undo so much, right, just to get to a healthy, stable state, right. As opposed to there, it's like everything that you need to be healthy is basically free. <laughs> right, it is. It's just it's basic. Right it's just you. getting back to the basics. We spend all this money, you know, trying to to do what most people in the world get for free. You know, eat healthy vegetables. Isn't that crazy? I I know it, that blows me away. It's our lives here in America are inherently toxic. Totally, it's just mm-hmm. designed that way from our food to the media to uh, our building to the, even know, like the fact that they have to like label organic food as organic when that should be the standard we should right. call the other yeah. food i don't toxic. know toxic yeah toxic <laughs> yeah let's not label the organic let's label the toxic right right exactly yeah well i think more and more people are coming around and seeing stuff like this but it's slow there's still a lot of people out there that i always tell people if you want to live the standard american lifestyle you're going to get the standard american diseases totally Mm -hmm. yep yeah you're 100 right i love that the hard thing is it's like you get sucked down such a rabbit hole you feel like you've got it figured out and then all of a sudden you're on to like the next thing yeah but that's the thing we've been on this journey and and it's a healing journey you know what i mean and it's there's growing pains and sometimes healing hurts you know but Mm -hmm. that's what we're about and that's what we're trying to help other people and oh i would i had another question we've got this meter to it like reads emf and rf and all the frequencies it's broken up into like three on the screen yeah and i don't entirely know how to read what it's telling me i just know that sometimes it beeps and like flashes a red light and we know that's really bad but we'll turn it on and i can show you a little rundown okay so right now the top where it says vm yep so that's your that's your electrical energy that's What's come, you can put that right next to the power line that's plugged into your laptop or next to the wall, or if you go underneath the power line, it's going to read high. The MG milligauss, that's for fans and motors. That's the magnetic energy. That's the one that interacts. That's, in my opinion, the most dangerous one. Okay. Um, And then the MW, that's milliwatts per 
uh, meter squared RF. That's coming from all the wireless devices. Okay. So Did you get that just in? to give yeah. taking notes. So the volts per meter, we want to be if we can be less than one on that. Yeah. That's a kind of a good number to go towards. The yep. milligauss, if we can be less than 0.3, that's ideal. I yep. don't like seeing it much more than one. Right now, you're at 1.2. Hopefully, that would move or that's changed when you go to your sleeping I... area. You know, go somewhere where you know there's no electronics around it, and they all should kind of go down to zero, except for radio frequency, because that's what's going over, over the airwaves. Makes sense. So for VM... And then you walk into the house, and you see it go up, kind of get an idea. But for radio frequency, that's in uh, microwatts or milliwatts. Can you hold it up just one more time? Yeah. Okay, so we want, ideally, we want to be like 0 0.001 or less. On the milliwatts. Okay. Milliwatts. For yeah. the first so, one, the VM one, you said less than 0.1, ideally? Less than one. Oh, less than one. Okay. Milligauss, less than 0.3. Less okay. than 0.3. Got it. Okay. So you probably have Wi-Fi going right now, and this laptop's yeah. running off Wi-Fi. Okay. So when you just held it up like that, it's really close to the antenna that's on the top of the laptop. Other thing that's tough with that on electric is by holding the electric, the electric reading, your body interferes with that reading. Mm. So when I take readings with my electric meter, I have a two-foot stick wooden dowel oh. that I have to hold it away from my body. Otherwise, I'm just reading my body voltage everywhere right. I walk. That makes you have sense. To have, so how you can use it, though, is set it down on your bed and then step away from it and oh, okay. look at what. So put it on one side and put it on the other, get the readings. Uh, you can go outside your house and, and go to, like, the four corners of your property. You mm -hmm. can look at the readings, write all three down. You can go to the four corners of your house, take readings. Then you can turn the power off in your house. And this is a really good experiment you guys can do is turn all the power off, set the main breaker mm -hmm. and go through your house, take readings and write it down and take readings in places where you sit. So where you're sitting right now, where you lay down in bed, the yeah. couch, kitchen, all the, in the right. office work and write the readings down for all three levels. You take power off readings throughout your house, around your property. And what that's going to do is tell us the baseline. So then you start seeing, oh, wow, you know, up front where the power line comes in, it's one. And as I slowly move to the back of my property, it goes all the way down to 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you have a gradient that kind of, and then you can see, okay, this is making a magnetic field that's slowly kind of degrading as it goes through the back of my house. Yeah. Or as you walk around the house for radio frequency, maybe one side of the house is a lot stronger than the other. You know, okay, well, that's where the cell tower is. I got a cell tower two miles away. Do you know happen to know where the cell tower is? I think your house. One, I think there's one over by the storage place. It's probably, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure. Thing. There's two. There's the, there's one right by Home Depot that's like right over there, and there's another one by the storage okay. place. I, I bet they're both a mile away, each of them. Okay. It's kind of a good distance, about a mile, because you're far enough away that the levels, by the time they get you and get into the house, yeah, you're getting fairly low. But you're also your cell phone doesn't have to work as hard. Sure. To get out to the tower. Sure. If you're yeah. somewhere where it's one bar, like I mentioned, the cell phone's now at full power, and if you're using this a lot, it's almost as bad as being right next to a cell tower. Totally. Because this is a two-way street. Yeah, yeah. So if you only show one or two bars, that's a bad thing, then, because then your phone has to work harder. Yep, absolutely. Um, is it when better? you're using your phone? It's better when you're not using your phone. Okay. Is it better to so, have Wi-Fi and cellular both on, or is it better to have Wi-Fi off on your phone? I've always wondered that. Yeah, I thought I would turn. I thought Wi-Fi was better than cell. But what so you're it's like talking? saying, is it better to have two kids yelling at you or one kid yeah. yelling at you? Right. So but they're both are. bad cellular is stronger because it has to go further wi-fi wow. is in the middle and then bluetooth is the lowest bluetooth only has to go 50 feet wi-fi can go up to 100 yards cellular can go up to 20 miles crazy okay bluetooth headphones i got a pair of bose bluetooth headphones that i don't use anymore because i'm terrified they're gonna they're gonna fry a hole through my brain when i wear them you're correct <laughs> okay I will use 
Okay. <laughs> that is a good yeah. assumption to make. Yes. <laughs> the reason is, is it's proximity. Like, remember you mentioned, you said, I really got to get close to these things before to really set it off. Well, guess what you're doing is you're putting yeah. two very powerful RF devices right next to your brain. It's not very important. Download what you need, Spotify, put it on airplane mode, turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now on your phones also, when you hit airplane mode, on Apple's, not every time will it turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Sometimes you have to physically go turn them off. And even a third step you might have to do is if you hit the button and it goes to white, yeah. then you actually have to go into settings and slide the slider over and actually turn it off. Oh, yeah. They always only white. white. What does that mean when it turns to white? That means that it's still active and sending out a beacon signal, but it won't allow connection. Here's another question I have. What are your thoughts on 5G? That's one of those things. There's just a lot of ridiculous scare tactic for people who don't understand it. Okay. The wave frequencies work when they're traveling through the air. The longer and the bigger the wavelength is, the further they'll travel and the farther that they'll penetrate. For example, AM radio station will go a long way. You can be way up in the mountains. You can be down in the basement. You can be in a cave and you're going to pick up AM radio station because the wavelength is huge. I mean, yeah. We're talking you know, several thousand feet for the wavelength. Now, AM or FM radio station uh, is a little bit smaller wavelength. It doesn't travel as far, but it sends more data. So the more wavelengths we have, or high, the lower or the higher the frequency, the more information that we can put on. Okay. Sure. So AM radio stations travel a long ways, but they don't sound really good. It's not what you would call high definition at all. Yeah. FM radio station will, will travel a lot less, but it has a lot more data. 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, these telephone companies, these telecom companies own frequency bandwidths. So we have the whole electromagnetic spectrum from the short waves all the way to the long waves. They own these specific frequencies. Now, 3G turn into 4G, they're using the same frequencies. They're just using better technology. They're using... It's like going from cassettes to CDs to MP3s. We're still listening to music, but now we can fit more data because we have different protocol, different ways of putting the data together where there's a gap in it. They can take that out and they can squeeze it and compress it. So 5G is basically just another version of 4G and they're using a lot of the same frequencies. Now, where people get all excited is that they're running out of frequencies so the government holds all the other extra stuff. They auctioned off a higher bandwidth. So the, the typical uh, cell phones are anywhere from 700 megahertz up to like 1.2 gigahertz, which is 1200 megahertz. And some even in the, the 2000 megahertz range. Uh, there was a bandwidth of 24, 23, 22, around that range that the military was using for all kinds of testing and stuff. So yeah. they said, so we'll sell this off to you. Now the problem with when we get up that high is it has to be line of sight. Your house, trees will block those millimeter bandwidths oh, quite a bit easier than it will the lower bandwidths. And so the reason for the reason that they get people get all excited about that is you have to have a lot more of them now. So instead of just one tower down at, sure. at Home Depot, I have to have one on every street light because I have to have a direct line of sight in order to connect oh, yeah. with that. The good thing is, is that it's not typically penetrating your house. And a lot of times, it's like if you have a jacket on or heavy clothing, a lot of times it's not even reaching your skin. Nice. And another good thing about the 5G too is that the, uh, the upper bandwidth of 5G is that they do what's called beam forming. So it's not really active. It's kind of sitting dormant until you pull out your phone to make a phone call. And then it will make a connection with you and point yeah. a signal in your direction. My, okay. my. So this is a lot of things about 5G that people don't really realize. Sure. That they, the upper bandwidth of 5G can actually be better for you than the 4G. Right. Okay, now, is, is 5G good? No, I'm not saying 5G is good. Is it as bad as what people say? Of course not. No, it's actually, in a lot of senses, it can be uh, better for us. Nice. Uh, so it's basically, so it's kind of, like you said, it's basically dormant. 
until we connect. Yeah, which is a good now, but now if you're if you're if you're at a you know busy downtown restaurant or something, you better there's probably it's it's connecting. It's it, you totally. know, it's but if you're just walking down an empty street, it's probably not beaming at you until you pull out your phone to check Instagram. Or right on, makes sense. Yeah, well, but good. the most important thing about the five G is that it is blocked really easily by trees and buildings and even some clothing. Cool. Something I've always wondered is we've always talked about, well, there's birds sitting on the power lines and the trees are fine that are touching the power lines. Right, like right. wouldn't those things keel over or die? Like, is it, or is it just because they're grounded or? That's a whole other topic about grounding. And that's an interesting point. And we can talk about that for a minute if you want. Yeah. Um, it's all about potential of grounding. So to have a, a current flow when we have power line power going through our power lines, it's charged electrons away from Earth. So at the jet power generating station, they use the magnets and the coils to strip the electrons away from Earth, and then they set them on the line. Now they're always trying to equalize and get back to Earth. Sure. So the grounding system in our house has a ground rod that goes into the ground, and those lines, those electrons go up through the light switch. They hit the light bulb, and then they find the path on the other side that goes back through the wire and back down to the ground, into the ground. Sure. So if we're not touching ground and we grab onto the wire, we're not gonna get shocked because we don't have a path back to ground. Right. Now, if I'm standing in water, standing in a swimming pool and I grab onto the wire, it's gonna shock the crap out of me because now I'm a direct line to ground. Sure. Now this brings into the conversation, the problem with grounding maps that we have. Grounding outside on the beach is amazing. What you guys are talking about in Costa Rica, laying on the grass and the waterfalls, it doesn't get better than that. Right. But when we go inside the home and we ground ourselves to the grounded electrical system, now we're in an electric field with charged electrons trying to find a way to ground. Where do you think they're going to want to go? Right. They're going to see us as right. a lightning rod. Now we're part of the system. Sure. So grounding yourself inside of a home that has power is probably one of the worst things you can do because now you're creating yourself part of the system. If right. you don't ground yourself, now you're like the bird on the wire. You yeah, know, it's not a path for you to go back. And that's the sense. current flow through our body, alternating current flow that causes the issues. I've got about a question. Water and air. How do we <laughs> cram all that in? <laughs> okay, first, first, let me let's talk about. Um, possible health benefits of like red light therapy. So you're talking about wavelengths. Um, what do you know about like red light therapy and the possible healing benefits? The electromagnetic spectrum is very wide from all the way up to x-ray, the visible light spectrum now. So we're talking about what we can actually see with our eyes and then infrared goes a little bit past that. We really can't see too much of that, but it has a lot of benefits like you just mentioned. So we have evolved on this planet for thousands and thousands of years, typically out in the sun or in front of a fire at night. It yeah. wasn't only until the last couple hundred years that we brought electricity and even the last hundred years where we brought this artificial light. And then the last maybe 30 years where we brought strobing artificial light. And right. so you look at a LED or like a fluorescent underneath a color spectrum meter, you're going to see a couple sharp spikes, maybe one in the blue, maybe one in the red, just to give it a glow depending on if it's a warm or a cool light. Now, if you were to take that same color spectrometer and go out into the sun, you're gonna see this broad, broad range of yeah. color. The whole, the full spectrum is coming from the sun all the way up into the infrared, the near infrared. Now, when we get into those near infrared, they can penetrate down into the skin. It can stimulate the mitochondria on a cellular level. It can do a lot of cellular healing. Uh, but it can also stimulate the eyes and kind of give us cues as to what time of day it is. And should we be producing melatonin? Should we be getting ready for bed? Should we be awake? So when we, so one of the things I like to do when I get up first thing in the morning is go out into the sunlight, just right up, even just get up in my underwear and go out back in my backyard and just let yeah. the sunlight hit my body, hit yeah. my eyes. You know, I'm not looking at the sun, not sun gaze or anything, but I'm, looking and facing the sun and letting it soak in for like 10, 15 minutes. Now, if you can't do that, you can supplement with the red lights, you know, like the minor red and the Jew or whatever. There's a whole bunch of those. Mm -hmm. Now with those, you're not quite getting the full spectrum. You're getting more specific 
tones, but if you can get the direct sunlight from the sun, that's going to give you the full spectrum. That's what our bodies are used to. So, you know, mm-hmm. your retreats and the things you're doing, the, anytime we can get our body back to nature, what we've evolved in, that's what our body loves. That's what our right. body's used to. It's all this synthetic stuff, lighting included, mm-hmm. is a problem. Now, the other part to the lighting too is the strobing effect. The mm-hmm. sun doesn't strobe. The sun is constant. That's what our eyes and our body likes. These LED lights and the new energy efficient bulbs, they're on for a duty cycle of maybe 20 or 30%, then they're off. And they're on, then they're off. And they do that to save power. And with that on off motion, we can decrease the energy consumption. But the problem is our eyes do not like that. Some right. people can yeah, have headaches, or brain fog, irritability is a big one. Um, headaches, tinnitus, because we're getting the strobing effect that our brains are like, Sure. Anytime we're doing that strobe or that vibration, that's the problem. It's not the constant okay. state flow, it's the vibration. Kind of like you look at supplements and stuff. It's like it's a kind of extracted from a whole where if you can get most of your vitamins and minerals and nutrients from like a whole food as opposed to like extracting everything into pills and capsules and potions, our body can read it better if it's taking it from like a fruit or a vegetable. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The same so- exact concept. You mentioned the sun. We do do we do sun gaze in Costa Rica on our retreats. We argue constantly with people um, on Instagram about sunscreen and why the sun is good for I you. I think it's just it's like is, it's, I feel like it's just like you can get too much of a good thing totally. and it can become a bad thing. What's your what's your what's your thought on uh, sun? Especially we've got little kids. Most of our followers have little kids. Um, we take them to the beach. We don't put sunscreen on them. Um, we use, occasionally we, we would rather we use would. hats and just, you know, limit our time, limit the exposure. If you're burning, it's clear that like, that's the signal that you're getting too much. But then to the extreme of actually staring at the sun, which again, we do in Costa Rica. Um, I can say, I don't do it when we come home. I, 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 I could do it more, but what's your thought? Is it harmful? Is it good? Uh, sun sun in general i mean basically kind of you guys answered exactly almost how i would answer it i i do it the same way you guys do it if you can be in the sun too long you yeah. can burn yourself too much of a good thing can be harmful i don't put chemicals on me or my kids absolutely not and mm-hmm. i listened to a podcast up here i'm not sure it's true or not but i've been trying it lately and you mentioned it with your, your retreat where don't wear sunglasses because right. you're get a lot of cues through your eyes so if you go out into the bright sun and put sunglasses on you're extending a signal to the brain that says oh it's really not that bright out here i don't really need to pr- produce melatonin our bodies yeah. give us everything we need but we got to treat it naturally so first couple times you know if some we live in idaho cold winters when we start it starts warming up first time at the beach maybe only 30 minutes out in the sun next right. time maybe an hour by the end of summer, the kids are running around all day long out in the sun and they're fine. It's because the skin has had a chance to build up that melatonin. But it yeah. takes a little while. You got to work into it. Makes Love sense. That. Makes perfect sense. Water. We've been on a journey lately, just learning so many things about water. We have a, we now have a reverse osmosis just for our drinking water and it runs through our Kangen machine. So it should be filtered, structured. And then we remineralize. We remineralize it with droppers. So we. I don't know. Hopefully, we're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And we we weren't sure about Kangen. I've heard a lot of people say it's snake oil, um, but we heard a lot of people say that that, that you got to energize and charge and electrolyze your water. And so we were like, okay, yeah, cool. So we feel pretty good about it. I don't know, but yeah, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, water is one of those things that people can go pretty deep with, and there is some snake oil stuff. And there's a lot of, you know, I was watching this uh, show, What the Bleep Do We Know? And I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's pretty cool. What's it called? What the Bleep Down the Rabbit Hole. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. It's super cool. But in there, they talk about this guy, Yamoto Yamashi or whatever. That, oh, yeah. I've heard that name. Did, yeah, he did the dark filled um, pictures. Right. Where he took random water and then took a picture. And he took water and he blessed it and took a picture. And he took water and put like paint on it and took a picture. Yep. And how 
the structure was completely different. The first thing you want to do is test your waters, see exactly what you have in your waters, see what we're working with. Some people's water is not so bad and there's not a whole lot of filtration you need to do. Other people's water can get pretty bad. So there's two parts to water. There's the getting the contaminants out and getting it to a state where it doesn't have any heavy metals or pharmaceuticals or PFAS or uranium or lead or maybe go on and on. There's so many things in our water these days. And then the step two of it is making the water more beneficial. And those are all just added bonuses. So structured water or hyper oxygenated water or yeah. hydrogenated water or the con change in the pH of the water or remineralizing water. So yeah. those are two different things when it comes to water. But you can't you can't leave out the first step. The first step's the most important. And that's, let's get everything out of the water that we don't want. Right. And then right. let's see if we want to start adding stuff to it. Now, <laughs> my take on the, so we run an, a whole home system and for the whole house. And then we run an RO system that we have for our drinking water and the ice thing. Yeah. I thought it, yeah, it's, it's very stripped. It's very just pure, clean water. Uh, we used to add mineral drops too, but we do, we just take a really good multivitamin. Okay. Cause either way, we're just adding it to the system. Right. You know, or I'm drinking a lot of water with my food, which I know has a lot of, like we we're talking about getting, getting the minerals from food and, and uh -huh. things. Yeah. That's you know? what I wondered too, you know, like there, our food is so hopefully mineral rich. Full of mineral. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're eating a good, healthy diet, a lot of times you don't have to supplement those minerals back in because you're getting it from your food. Right. And once it's in your stomach, you're getting it one way or another. The water's just the delivery system for the minerals. Yeah. It'd be the same if you took a chug of RO water, then took the droplets in your mouth. I mean, you're, right. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Your body or, knows how to make sense of yeah. it. I'm just thinking about something else too. We live in a newer home, so I haven't, honestly, I think mold is the last thing I think about, but I'm also thinking, okay, mold and air, like air quality. Can you talk to us about those two things? Yeah, what do you do for air air quality? We live, let me say this first. Brand new development. We're 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 a few miles from the ocean. We're surrounded by pine trees. We're not in the city. We love where we are. We're kind of in the country. Um, so I'm not worried about air quality outside, but I kind of almost in the home. I'm I'm worried more about the air quality in the home. Well, you kind of just totally preface what I was going to talk about. And that's that a lot of times outside air quality is just fine. Yeah. Maybe not perfect, but it's a lot better than what's inside. Maybe situations like if you're downtown LA and the freeways, and we got particulates and carbon monoxide and things outside, or the Western states and it's fire season, or if you're downwind from a nuclear factory or a polluting plant, but the majority of people's homes Outside air is, is pretty good. I mean, I'm looking outside right now. It's a nice blue sky. Uh, I can guarantee if I did some testing, it's probably clearer, cleaner out there than it is inside the house. Just because inside the home, we have a whole range of things that are polluting and adding things to the air. Because you think about it, inside air is made up of outside air. So we bring the air to the inside and we add to it in majority of cases. Some yeah. people with pretty heavy duty air filtration systems can be filtering that, that stuff out, but the majority of the time we're adding to it. So if we're not using healthy cleaning products or personal care products, those things are all off gassing into the air. Okay. Uh, people are still using Glade plugins. Uh, yeah. Guys, I don't seem like the type to have Glade plugins, but I see it a lot. Right. These people the want to have their woman. home smell a certain way. Like I want it to smell like fresh mountain air, or whatever. Well, that's not <laughs> fresh mountain air. That's chemicals right. coming into your house. Or right. people have pets. You know, so as much as people love their pets, sometimes it gets pretty nasty inside people's homes. Sure. Or maybe they're cooking with gas and they're not exhausting out, and they yeah. have hydrocarbons. And so, I mean, I could go on and on and on about all the different things. Highly offensive, uh, overused perfume and cologne. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, or, or downy, downy uh, fabric softener and yeah. uh, dryer sheets. And I had a client yesterday, their next door neighbor had just moved in. They love having their windows open. It's on the beach in San Clemente. And they use the dryer sheets and the downies and the Tide Pods. And she says she almost can't stand it now. Because right. when she does her laundry, it blows right into the window where their office is. Mm, now it's like yeah. they either close up their office or they have to smell these 
dryer sheets. Well, Americans, they got this mentality that you got to have the smell to things. That's just kind yeah. of how you, people need to break loose from that and realize that no smell is what you should be going for. You mm -hmm. should go into a home, into your house and not smell anything. Right. It should yeah. be very extremely neutral. And then if you want to add a little essential oil here and there, whatever, that's fine. Yeah. Little bits. You can overdo some of mm -hmm. these essential oils. It's kind of like with water, our body just needs the pure water. That's what it really needs. And with air, mm -hmm. our body just needs the pure air. It doesn't yeah. need all the extra yeah. stuff. Right. So right. again, we're taking out the bad stuff. If we want, we can add the stuff in, but we got to make sure we're taking out the bad stuff. So in the majority of cases, mm -hmm. simply opening up your doors and windows and getting fresh air going through is amazing. If you right. go outside and inside and you can smell and you can tell a difference or you go out and you're like, I don't really know what it smells, but I smell something. There's something in my house. It's musty. Yeah. You need to open up your windows and doors and get some ventilation going. Right. I will say in this new house, I haven't noticed much of a smell, but especially in our old home, what was it, a 70s or 60s home? Yeah. When I didn't notice it when we were there all the time, but when we would leave for vacation and come back, I would be like, oh my gosh, smells this like smells home. so weird. Like yeah. old people yep. smell. And I'm like, what yeah. is that? What is that smell? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and some of some of these too, and I did one recently here in California <laughs> where it was infested with mice and rats. And you go up in the attic and there was mouse droppings and urine. I mean, the first of that is a brand new home. What do we have in brand new homes? Off gassing, right? The paint, the furniture, from the glues, from the PVC pipes, the flooring, right? All of these things, the compressed fiber boards in the cabinets, it's all off gassing. Sometimes yeah. up to five years until you move into. I have plenty of clients that they call them, they move into a brand new home. They call me up. I've been here a month now. We got headaches, brain fog. We're we're not feeling good. What is going on? Yeah. Oh, what is it? I go in there and I'm just it's chemical off gas. They did right. wow. yeah. home with healthy products. They used synthetic products. Right. It's a big problem these days. And it doesn't matter the price of the home. Even expensive, nice, fancy homes are the same problem. So many people ask me, like. You know, they're having trouble losing weight or they have hormone issues or this or that, and they're doing their diet perfectly. And there's so many other things that we can look at, but like everything around us is working against us. So that's right. why we're like, how can we optimize our living space too? Not just the foods we're eating, yeah. you know, because we overlook the fragrances and the molds and all of these things that, right. you know, quite frankly, even if we are aware of them we aren't educated on like what to do about them which is why it's really awesome that we connected with you yeah yeah no and i love that you guys are doing that and i might be a little bit partial to my industry you know but i see all the different things in the in that can affect our health i mean we got nutrition you know which you guys know a lot of it we got fitness that makes a big difference we got mental state of mm -hmm. our, our mindset and our spirituality and then we, you know we got our environment I tend to think that people forget about the environment. I'm not sure exactly why, but people don't give environment enough right. uh, of the attention that it should. It is the root cause for a lot of these chronic illnesses. You know, right. And a lot of times it may not be the one thing that caused your illness, but it's the one thing that's keeping you from getting better. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So do you have any air filtration uh, recommendations as far as companies or devices? But yeah. There's a bigger yeah. issue when it comes to standalone units is that a lot of times people will buy the standalone unit, they'll set it in their living room, it'll be running, but then they have an HVAC system. So what happens if we have a 3,000 square foot home and when then we have a little air doctor sitting over in the corner, right. is that that air doctor is doing the whole house. It's yeah. not just doing that room because the room is circulating through the house several times an hour if it's running, right. running efficiently. Better option is, and what we see from our testing, is getting a, a high MERV rating filter and putting it in your HVAC filter system and then click the fan to on. So instead of just running when the AC needs it, that have it always going. You have a built in filtration system in your house. So there's really not a lot of reason to go spend a thousand dollars for an air filter in every single room. When you can go buy a $20 air filter and pay an extra $20 a month in electricity to run that fan all the time in the background. Because right. all these filters are is a fan pulling air through a filter. 
Totally. Same exact thing your HVAC system is. Now, there are some caveats to that, too, because some of these units are older, but the majority of HVAC systems can handle taking a higher MERV rating filter and pulling these particles out. Yeah. Go Home Depot, buy the highest MERV rated filter, basically buy the most expensive one. I've done this in our old house. I bought the most expensive one. We had an old system. I could tell it wasn't running right because yep. maybe you couldn't handle it. Yep. So, so take that into account, but do your best to get the highest MERV rated, rated filter. Yeah, work your way back down. So if you start with the top, you're running, you're fine, no worries. But yeah, you do need to be careful of that. That's important here. Now, when it comes to the UV light, so when you shine UV light, bacteria or viruses, after a couple of sec seconds, it will kill it. So if you have a UV light and you have air flying by it, the thing is, is that you need a couple seconds with mold spores uh -huh. there's only so many things that we can use to kill it's either going to be uv light or, or some oxidizer like ozone or chlorine dioxide i have a cheaper workaround that you can do there's a product called super stratum which has a polymer polymer protectant which will it's actually really really cool for spraying around showers and toilets and stuff because it will block mold but you can actually spray it on your filter some i have clients that they just we don't we don't have much money to work with they go down to go down to home depot and order one of those box fans and yeah buy a filter and just duct tape it to the back and run that thing. Right. Like, cool. And when it's fire season, we'll do that at our house. I mean, some there's some days where you couldn't even see the sun. One time I, I burnt the pancakes, this filter <laughs> got really loud and I was like, oh my gosh, it's actually doing its, its actually job. actually working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause it will measure, I got a commercial one like that called the Jasper, which is really cool that it will monitors, uh, monitors VOCs and monitors particulates. And so if either of those two go up above a threshold, it varies its power depending on how much, but for me, like if, if we got mold spores floating around the air, if we got insect parts floating around the air, I don't want to breathe any of that stuff. So even if the particulates are low, I still want that thing running clean in my air. Right. Terrifying. Okay, cool. That's super helpful. Okay, I've got one more question. I have so many people coming to the door. Again, new development, new neighborhood. You know, they're trying to sell us security systems. And there's about a, a every day, there's a new person that has a new something that's all natural, all organic. They're going to spray to keep the bugs and the spiders and stuff out of our house. But what do I, what can I do around my house? Because we've got spiders that are huge and I don't really want them in the house. What can I spray around the house that isn't going to, you know, give us tumors? <laughs> no, we, we, <laughs> we have the same battle. Step one is we want to make sure we steal all the openings. So there really is no openings for bugs, rodents, anything to get into the house. We want to be really careful about that. So we want to leave windows open, but we also want to have screens over the windows. We want to have door, screens over the doors. Um, Step two is keeping a really clean house because what are they looking for? Looking for food. Those right, things are, right. need something to eat. If right. you don't have any food in your house, chances are they're not going to be, they're not going to have a good time in your home. They're going to go on to the next one. So Makes keeping sense. them out and then you got to be real diligent about the keeping them out part, finding little cracks and crevices. You got to go around your house with a caulking gun. Yeah. But second part is about keeping a meticulously clean house you know doing regular cleaning on the house but also doing deep cleaning once or twice if you can afford it do a deep clean twice a year when i say deep clean i mean we take everything out of the room everything yeah. and we wipe or we hepa vac first from top to bottom every dust is getting sucked away then we take clean rags out of a bucket we take a five gallon bucket we put a 200 shop rags in there from home depot and we put our healthy solution into some chlorine dioxide solution or whatever natural cleaning product that you guys use. You take one rag out, you rinse it, then you wipe like a five by five foot section of the wall. Then you fold it in half, wipe again, fold it in half, wipe it. So you're using a clean surface right. on each of the sections. Then you take that rag and you put it in uh, your throwaway bucket. Sure. And then you grab a brand new rag out of the cleaning solution and you keep going throughout that room from top to bottom, from farthest to the door and you yeah. work your way through now you know a lot of people they'll have a solution of water they'll have one or two rags they're wiping they put it back in there wiping it doesn't take long until you're just spreading stuff around everywhere right it makes sense so using the clean rag method and then as you bring belongings into the home it's all or back into the room that's also a good time to do the, the mary condo method you know do i really need this or not and right. simplify 
if you do need it, you need it in the room and it has a place, it's got to get wiped down. If it's a fabric that can fit in the washing machine, double cycle washing machine. If you can fit it in the dishwasher, put it in the dishwasher. Everything else needs to get hepavac and wiped and it goes back in the room. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but when we test dust in people's homes, it's primarily dead skin cells. That's what the majority of, of the dust is, but it's also insect fibers and insect parts and insect feces. It's rodent dander, rodent feces. It's broken down foams and fibers and glues. It's mold spores, it's mycotoxins, endotoxins, uh, bacteria, and pollen. So these are the things oh. generally that we find that the dusting and that regular cleaning of your house regularly is very important. Also by doing that, then you're taking the food away. Wow. wow. Makes sense. When we first moved in here, cause we're like huge fruit eaters and there were some openings that Dusty found in the right. sliding doors. I already we were like infested sealed. with fruit flies and regular flies. And we're like, we can't do this with all the fruit and the food, but he plugged the holes. And since then, yeah, it's no been flies, okay, nothing. Because but... they were so in Florida, again, in case of floods, like, our, our, like we've got some big slider doors right here in front of us. There's holes in the bottom in case it would yep. flood, the water needs to weigh out. And I'm like, look, if it floods, I'll pull this, these, these foam pieces off of here. But for now, bugs yeah. are coming right in. So, yeah. Okay, Max yep. wants me to show you this. From uh, Home Depot. Yeah. Oh, you guys made cool. that? We're talking a lot about Home Depot today. They should be sponsoring this video. <laughs> you know, I was thinking that too. Yeah, they totally should. We've mentioned them a lot. <laughs> yeah. it's funny. All right, man. Well, we've, uh, like you said, we could talk for a super long time. Got to have a solution. That's, and I always try to be solution based because that's yeah. the one I don't want to cause anxiety when people for listen sure. to podcast or me go to their house um, yeah. that's the last thing I want because anxiety can be just as harmful as the toxin you're worried about that's that's yeah. my thing with with food and everything being so tightly strong and ang overly anxious is worse than any of this other stuff so, mm -hmm. so true and real quick on the um oh yeah chemtrails chem chem are they like the airplanes releasing chemicals then into the sky like yeah. Is it like a way of like disposing of ke bad chemicals or am I understanding it wrong? So yes and no. Um, chemicals, so the gasoline that they use for jets are not, not filtered very much. There's a lot of chemicals in it that they have lead in it. And so when you have four big jets putting out exhaust, it's like breathing out of the back of a tailpipe. It, they're, right. they're putting a large amount of chemicals into the air. Are they specifically putting harmful chemicals on a plane and dispersing them out? Maybe at high level, but the majority of what we see in the sky is the condensation from the jet engines, airplanes. And, and when we see it last and grow, it's because they went through a high pressure system that has water molecules that haven't uh, condensed yet. And when you fly through that with high pressure um, and hot air, then it will condense and it kind of grows out from that. Makes so, sense. so it's there's a little bit of truth back and forth. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely chemicals. They're definitely putting stuff up, but the majority of what you see is just the contrails. And yes, they are also cloud seeding with the aluminum dioxide. That is very real. I'm a pilot for fun. I fly, and I was in a in a in a airport FBO, and I'm waiting, and I pull up this magazine, look, and there was an ad for people that were pilots that had planes that want to put these devices on for set for cloud seeding for the aluminum oxide and the silver dioxide and there's several oh, wow. different things that they do but it's yeah. a very real thing and so when people think oh it's a conspiracy no it's actually it's extremely real it's very and you can even look wow. it up there's a full website for pilots that can go on and that you can get a job so you can help pay for your plane by flying through clouds and seeding because so let's say they want it in a specific town they need more uh, water and we got a storm coming or clouds that are coming in. If you go fly through those clouds 20 miles in advance and release all these particles into it, what happens is the water molecules will now attach to these little micro particles and they'll become heavy and they'll fall out of the sky. Sure. So that's what's that is totally going on across the country. Now, a lot of the stuff we see in the sky is the jets. It's the condensation from the jets. But a lot of the, what, what I'm talking about with the cloud seeding, you're not seeing that kind of stuff because it's typically right. happening 
inside of the clouds from smaller planes. You're not really seeing the particles coming out. Even I think now living by the ocean, I think about all the microplastics in the sand and in the water and in the fish that people are eating and all of this stuff. And our friend who is in the Navy said she was absolutely disgusted. They were at sea. They were taking all of the trash bags, tied them on a super long rope and just let it go into the ocean. They dropped it down. The and let US it go. Navy. You know, we like to go down to Mexico a lot. We were down to say Alita and they, there was this big deal down there where the sewage. So in a lot of these third world countries, they just dump the sewage into the ocean. There's no yeah. treatment or anything, but there was a big deal with Saley because it's kind of a bay and it's a big surfing town where they made them extend it out like another mile. So the, all the sewage from that area was only dumping out like, oh. like 200 yards off the ocean. And so <laughs> people were swimming like, tampons and toilet paper and turds floating around oh, so they made it bro. send it out you know a mile offshore but just kind of got me thinking like i yeah. mean this is happening all up and down the coast of all these third world countries and and mm -hmm. we're just yeah. dumping everything in there it's insane yeah. cloud seeding inevitably that stuff rains down with the rain where we're at over here on the west coast we have a serious problem right now it hasn't rained in over over a month. I think it's because so many people have been messing around with cloud seeding. We've kind of just messed up the way yeah. things are. Yeah. One thing I do like about being here though, at least in the tropics, besides being able to grow our own food and fruit is there's, there is no cloud seeding going on because it rains like crazy. They wouldn't they probably, probably don't need, need it. They don't need to do that around here. But, um, and another thing too, similar to where we are here in Florida, Costa Rica places like that it's like yeah. we need to get we need to get to a place where we can be sustainably living yeah. off grid on our own and in the meantime yeah. we do the best we do the like I always say you got to do your best and forget the rest and empowering people with free free helpful content like this is what yeah about, so mm -hmm. yeah so we could talk all day we probably better go i got a plane to catch her in a little bit all right man sounds, sounds good. good we'll be in touch thanks a lot really nice to meet you guys have yeah, a good day you too. we'll see you there are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better eat move and rest we're dusty aaron max olivia and Bo, and we're the stanzix we aspire to live a plant-centric faith forward healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it join us every week as we blend chop juice run lift ride and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance deeper connection and true happiness within